tea at the tree dome. Chapter 3. Hold on, the little square dude. The squirrel cried, I'm a coming. She fled the clam like she was having a coin. When it landed, the frightened squirrel then moved on to some of her expert karate moves. Yeah, she cried, amazing a karate chop. Ha, huh, she added, a coin and karate kick. Uh, yeah, she finished unspoiling a series of master moves, making the clam spin like a top. The clam's top fell open in its bath, and the few SpongeBob went out. What happened? The heavy. I still need to fall right into the brusque school stumped in the air, and the clam. Look of a boot and it threw it over her head and she then wanted to spin the show teacher like a top punching and driving a habitat from before to look like a final uppercut that sent the clam up up and far away from the floor to the left and shot his fears. Howdy, the squirrel said, then looking down at the front floor. Hey! Spongebob, Spongebob said, why were you? And I can eat too. The school linked but he then pulled up the silver crane. Awesome. So, what's your name? Spongebob asked. Sandy, she said. Sandy Cheeks. Sandy waked up and went through the series of Come on, I'm going to Well, we all call myself. She moved across the western floor. She took a grin and ran toward the wall. Ah, SpongeBob! He yelled and he moved. And she ran up to the wall and her perfect backflip and let it a 45 degree angle on the corner of her head. No, one of Sandy. Said, well, well, SpongeBob, they can get her at this. Sandy announced, leaping over to the back of the sides of Spongebob, SpongeBob's carnival home at Bikini Bottom. Close on the right, Sandy she moved up, up, up all of her inner strength and without a sign of a massive fall in the machine karate chop. All was down. Then the rock began to vibrate. Sunny, the bottom flew the water. The rock continued to shake, finally exploded into a million tiny pieces. That scattered in all direction, directions. I saw Pebble on Tom's forehead. Oh, he sent the phone at the little squirrel who made his play of karate. Stopping out of his train, Spongebob tried to act uh, unimpressed. Oh, yeah, he said. No, sorry. Watch this. Spongebob raised his arms and said, faster than the eye could follow, stroked his first right hand into the groove of his long armpit. Observe, he said. Then he pumped his left arm up and down. Rap, rap, rap. Sandy. Fell back on her tail with an uncomfortable case of the giggles. After the game, also, she gave Spongebob a playful chop on the top of his square, square head. Unlike you, Spongebob, we could be tighter than bark on the tree. Spongebob laid up, copying Sandy's karate move and chopping her on the glass helmet she wore. I like you too, Sandy. Hi, young. Point. Yeah. Spongebob cried his tiny arm. Head aching from the mouth below. Blow. What is that thing in the hallway? Why, that's my own helmet, Sandy replied, knocking the thick glass with her knuckles. Neat. Spongebob said, may I try it on? Sandy, Sandy laughed. No, she said. I need it to breathe. 
I'm going to have my F not wanting to be left out of a good thing. Yeah, wanting to be left out of a good thing. So I know. Me too. I know that it's good. Let's go and let that SpongeBob in shock. No kidding. She asked. SpongeBob Frost said it. Good. No kidding. He said. Truth to be told. SpongeBob wants to show what this. It was. But. But if. If there's no fun, I did so much. Why he. Why sure. Why for sure it had to be a most excellent thing. Stay tuned for chapter 4, coming up soon.